Hello everybody, I am Mika Seppälä. This video is an introduction to Taylor series. Our goal is to represent a given function as the sum of a converging power series. In order to see how that can be done, we start conversely, we start with a power series that converges. So if the power series a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus a3 times x cubed plus and so forth converges, then it defines a function f of x which is differentiable on the open interval on which this series converges. So we start with this power series and the function defined by it. And our first problem is to find a formula for the coefficients a k in terms of this function f of x. So we start with a converging power series a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus a3 times x cubed plus and so forth. This converging power series defines a function f of x. We wish to find a formula for the coefficients a k in terms of this function f. And we first observe that by inserting x equals 0 to this equation, we get that f at 0 must be a 0. So the power series that we have is now f of x equals f at 0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus a3 times x cubed plus and so forth. We next derive a formula for a1. By differentiation, we get that the derivative of f at x is, first of all, the derivative of the constant f at 0, but that derivative is 0. Then we have derivative of the term a1 times x, which is simply a1. Derivative of a2 times x squared is 2 times a2 times x. Derivative of a3 times x cubed is 3 times a3 times x squared, and then it continues. So the derivative of f is a1 plus 2 times a2 times x plus 3 times a3 times x squared plus and so forth. And inserting here x equals 0, we get that a1 equals the derivative of f at 0. So we have a formula also for a1. So now the power series is f at x equals f at 0 plus f prime at 0 times x plus a2 times x squared plus a3 times x cubed plus and so forth. Next we look at the coefficient a2. By differentiation we first get that the derivative of f at x is f prime at 0 plus 2 times a2 times x plus 3 times a3 times x squared plus and so forth. And the second derivative of f at x is 2 times a2 plus 6 times a3 times x plus and so forth. And here we insert x equals 0, we get a2 equals the second derivative at 0 divided by 2. The function f of x is defined as the sum of the converging series a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus and so forth that is f of x equals summation k from 0 to the infinity, a k times x to the power k. To find the general formula for the derivatives of this function, we need to compute all the derivatives of this general term, a k times x to the power k. Let us do that next. The first derivative of the term a k times x to the power k is k times a k times x to the power k minus 1. The second derivative is k minus 1 times k times a k times x to the power k minus 2, and the third derivative is k minus 2 times k minus 1 times k times a k times x to the power k minus 3. We may continue differentiation as long as the exponent of x remains non-negative. So the jth derivative of a k times x to the power k is k minus j plus 1 times k minus j plus 2 times and so forth times k minus 2 times k minus 1 times k times a k times x to the power k minus j. And here we must assume that j is at most k. If j equals k then k minus j is 0 and x to the power 0 is 1. 
So if j equals k, then the derivative dj of the term ak, x to the power k, is just a constant. And all the derivatives afterwards are zero. So we have that the j's derivative of ak times x to the power k is k minus j plus 1, k minus j plus 2, times and so forth, times k minus 2, times k minus 1, times k times ak times x to the power k minus j. And this coefficient can be written as k factorial divided by k minus j factorial times ak times x to the power k minus j. And this is valid if j is at most k. If j is k, then the kth derivative of ak times x to the power k is simply k factorial times ak. And all the higher derivatives are zero. Using the formula just obtained, we now compute a formula for the general jth derivative of the function f of x defined as the sum of the converging power series summation k from 0 to the infinity a k times x to the power k. So the jth derivative of this function f is of course the jth derivative of the power series summation k from 0 to the infinity a k times x to the power k. And now recall that a converging power series may be differentiated term by term. Therefore, the j's derivative of the power series summation k from 0 to the infinity a k times x to the power k is the power series summation k from 0 to the infinity j's derivative of a k times x to the power k. And now observe that if k is less than j, then the j's derivative of x to the power k is zero. Therefore, in this serious expansion, summation k from zero to the infinity, j's derivative of a k times x to the power k, the first few terms are zero, and we really start the summation from the index value j. So the j's derivative of this function f is summation k from j to the infinity, k factorial divided by k minus j factorial, times ak times x to the power k minus j. Here we now used the formula derived a moment ago. This j's derivative can be written as uh, summation k from j to the infinity k factorial divided by k minus j factorial times ak times x to the power k minus j. And this series starts j factorial times aj plus j plus 1 factorial divided by 1 factorial times aj plus 1 times x plus j plus 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial times a j plus 2 times x squared plus and so forth. Observe that this first term j factorial times a j was obtained by substituting k equals j into the formula k factorial divided by k minus j factorial times a k times x to the power k minus j. Now if we substitute k equals j then k minus j is zero and 0 factorial is 1, and then x to the power 0 is also 1, therefore the first term is simply j factorial times a k. Now, inserting x equals 0, we get from this formula that the j's derivative of the function f at 0 is simply j factorial times a j. From this we get that the coefficient a j is the j's derivative of f at 0 divided by j factorial. This observation means that uh, if we start with a function that is defined as the sum of a converging power series, then this power series for this function f is of the form f at 0 plus f prime at 0 divided by 1 factorial times x plus f double prime at 0 divided by 2 factorial times x squared, plus third derivative of f at 0 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed, plus and so forth. That is summation k from 0 to the infinity, k's derivative of f at 0 divided by k factorial times x to the power k. So this formula holds for functions that are defined as sums of converging power series. Now conversely, if we start with a function f, which is infinitely many times differentiable, 
then we may form the power series summation k from 0 to the infinity, k's derivative of f at 0 divided by k factorial times x to the power k. Such a power series is called the Maclaurin series of this function f. And it turns out that under rather general conditions, this Maclaurin series represents actually the given function f. Maclaurin series are named after Colin Maclaurin, the Scottish mathematician who was born in 1698 and who died at the age of 48 in 1746. Colin Maclaurin had a brilliant career. He was only 19 when he was appointed professor at the University of Aberdeen. And at that time he was the youngest ever person to be appointed professor and he held that title for over 200 years. Instead of considering power series in powers of x, we may consider power series in powers of the term x minus a, and if a function f is infinitely many times differentiable, then we may form the series summation k from 0 to the infinity, k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial times x minus a to the power k. Such a series is called the Taylor series of the function f at x equals a. It turns out that for a wide class of functions, under very general conditions, this Taylor series converges and can be used to study the function near the point a. Taylor series have been named after the English mathematician Brooke Taylor, who was born in 1685 and who died at the age of 46 in 1731. Brooke Taylor belonged to the very best English mathematicians. His contemporaries included Sir Isaac Newton, Gottfried Leibniz and the Bernoulli brothers. Brooke Taylor's claim to fame is his theorem that allows us to estimate the error that we make when we approximate the value of a function f with the nth partial sum of its Taylor series at x equals a. That error is f of x minus summation k from 0 to n, k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial times x minus a to the power k. And Taylor's theorem states that this error is uh, the n plus first derivative of the function f evaluated at some point cx between x and a, divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the power n plus 1. And this assuming that f is n plus 1 times differentiable. Now, for many functions, we can show that this error approaches 0 as n grows. And this is what makes Taylor series work. Let us apply Taylor's theorem to study the Maclaurin series of the exponential function f of x equals e to the power x. The exponential function has a property that all of its derivatives are the exponential function itself. Therefore, the exponential function and all of its derivatives take the value 1 when x equals 0, and this means that the Maclaurin series for the exponential function is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so forth, that is some measure k from 0 to the infinity, x to the power k divided by k factorial. One can easily compute the radius of convergence of this power series by the ratio test and one observes that this radius of convergence is the infinity. This means that this series converges for all values of x. Now, let us study the error that we make when we approximate the exponential function at the point x with um, the nth partial sum of its Maclaurin series. By Taylor's theorem, there is a number cx, which is between 0 and x, such that this error is e to the power cx divided by n plus 1 factorial times x to the power n plus 1. Now this point cx depends on x 
and it may vary according to the value of n. However, e to the cx is always at most e to the absolute value of x. This means that e to the cx is bounded by a bound which does not depend on n. And from that it follows that this error term e to the cx divided by n plus 1 factorial times x to the power n plus 1 approaches 0 as n approaches the infinity. And this means that the Maclaurin series of the exponential function in fact represents the exponential function everywhere for all values of x. To summarize, let us recall that Taylor series have been defined for functions which are infinitely many times differentiable at the point x equals a. And Taylor series for such a function f is summation k from 0 to the infinity, k is derivative of f at a divided by k factorial times x minus a to the power k. Maclaurin series are special types of Taylor series. They are Taylor series at x equals 0. The Maclaurin series, that is the Taylor series for the exponential function at x equals 0 is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so forth, that is summation k from 0 to the infinity, x to the power k divided by k factorial. Taylor's theorem about the error of estimation tells us that this Maclaurin series for the exponential function converges and represents the exponential function e to the power x everywhere. So the equation e to the power x equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so forth is valid for all values of x.